This is In-Depth. The great ship is now docked in a new home. LST-325 made the move this month to an all-new mooring site at Tropicana Evansville. It has been talked about for years, and now the LST crew and volunteers are very busy getting ready for an opening scheduled at the new location this coming weekend. Joining me live now via Skype aboard LST-325, uh, the board chairman, uh, President uh, Chris uh, Donahue. Chris, how long has this really been talked about uh, from the beginning when a light bulb went off in someone's head and they said, we need to be downtown? It'll uh, be eight years uh, come July 10th. So yeah, we're coming up on eight years. So you know, you've got that right down to the date. Um, you're not far from where these ships were built. I think you can actually see uh, the old location of the old shipyards now from the boat in its location. Is that true? Oh yeah, we're, we're about a quarter mile from the, you know, the, uh, the half mile from the shipyard. So uh, we cut down a few of these little trees out there on the river. We can point it out to folks and uh, yeah, a lot closer. And how is the grand old boat running? Will you be weighing anchor more frequently and cruising on the Ohio River? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, we're not cruising anywhere this year. We've decided because of the pandemic, not to risk uh, the health of our crew. And uh, uh, really, uh, it, it would be a big risk to folks coming on. We had three, three cities scheduled, but it, it wouldn't be good for us and it wouldn't be good for other folks. So safety is our primary concern and we've made that decision taking the financial hit, kind of like everybody else has. And, and tell me about what will happen this weekend. Uh, we're opening Saturday. I'm, uh, like I said, I'm still in the uh, visitor center right now, getting ready to go home. And uh, we've, we're pretty much got it licked. On uh, 10 a.m. Saturday, we're open uh, seven days a week, starting Saturday. From uh, uh, every day but Sunday, it's uh, 10 to 4. And uh, on Sunday, it's 12 to 4. Uh, we may we may make we may widen that a little bit as we see how things work out. The pandemic uh, gets behind us, but uh, uh, and one thing I want to emphasize on this first day. Normally, I'm on here telling everybody to come out. And let's do it the first day. Uh, now I'm saying not necessarily so. Uh, we don't we don't want a big crowd. We're still under the 50% rule of our museum now. To that point, we have a ship which is actually bigger than our building, and we have this building. So uh, we can we can funnel people here and there. It's it's uh, we have that advantage. But uh, uh, some of you can come out Sunday and during the week, perhaps. So you don't necessarily got to come out all in one day Saturday. And you just uh, pretty well anchored my, uh, answered my next question. You're having to make a lot of adjustments, especially in that new visitor center uh, because of the pandemic. Um, uh, how are you doing that? I mean, uh, people can come in and you get them on the boat as soon as possible and try to space them out uh, in the center itself? Right. What we'll be looking at as it happens, as it transpires, uh, we'll probably take your temperature when you come in. I think, you know, if you're if you're 100.4, I think, you know, we'll ask you, uh, maybe, maybe you should go somewhere else. And, uh, 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 we encourage people to wear masks. It's not mandatory here, but uh, keep, keeping that uh, six-foot distance uh, is important. So uh, uh, the other thing is I wanted to point it out. I was over at Tropicana today. There, the Marigo Hotel is not open yet. Uh, the, the other one, the older one, is. Uh, but parking is something I wanted to touch on here. Uh, you can park in the Tropicana garage. They're, they are somewhat open over there, but you, uh, you'd be walking across the street at, at, at you know, on your own. Uh, our, I'm encouraging people to park behind Reraz back there in, in boogie nights uh, in an open flat area. There must be two acres out there. And uh, you can go into, we'll have a sign out there. You can go in, there's a door by the Lamerigo, and you can go up, uh, up, up across the skywalk. You can take the stairs up or you can take uh, uh, an elevator and air conditioning, come clear across the skywalk that you're always driving under over here on the Riverside and then back down another elevator into our building. So that's the coolest part. You don't even have to go out in the weather. Or if you want to, you know, take your life into your own hands, uh, you, you can walk straight across Riverside, but I can't emphasize enough, be real careful. Yeah. And uh, we'll try to have some police presence out there because there is a curve there. And uh, uh, until, uh, until Tropicana is fully open, we just want everybody to be real careful. Why has this location been so important? We've been talking about this for a long time, Chris, uh, for several years, uh, you're really going to get a bigger audience, especially after this COVID-19 crisis. 
hopefully will be ending. But uh, tell me about the location here. Why is this so critical for LST 325? Well, it's already become obvious we haven't opened the door yet. Uh, we've been working here for a few weeks. People are coming up, looking in, knocking on the door. Hey, when are you opening? Uh, you know, we had none of that at the old location. So we're, we're really enthused and uh, uh, getting a lot of calls. That's another thing. Our phone lines are not have not been forwarded through yet. So if you try to get us by phone as of tonight, they're still not connected. I'm hope, hoping they are by Saturday. But we can run credit cards and do all that kind of stuff so we can carry on. Uh, so if, if you ring and nobody answers, it's not because we're blowing you off. It's because we're not hooked up yet. But it's, it's, it's curious to, to say that our 77-year-old technology is working fine. It's the newfangled stuff that uh, we have issues with. But uh, uh, we're going to make it happen on Saturday. And, you know, there's such a huge piece of history that we're lucky to have right here in Evansville. And when we think about when we go on board that boat, think about those those troops, many of them kids, who uh, did so much and uh, put their lives at risk. Some did not come home, and many of them served on the LSTs. Chris, Donahue will be talking to you. You take care, stay safe, and good luck on your soft opening this weekend. Sure, Brad, and, and to you and your station, there is there is not one other media outlet, and, and you personally, who have done more for our cause in the last eight years uh, to get us where we're at today. So a big shout out to you and, and your station on that. Well, Chris, we're honored to be a part of this and get the word out about uh, a great ship. And many of these boats, of course, obviously, were built right here in Evansville, Indiana. Thanks so much, Chris Donahue president of LST 325. You're watching Eyewitness News at 9. We'll be right back.